What are SpaceX's plans for Starship operations in Florida? Will we witness Starship in action in the Sunshine State in the near future? These questions have undoubtedly become a focal point recently as SpaceX undertakes a series of intriguing activities involving the Starship launch tower in Florida. Before SpaceX commenced work on this launch pad a few weeks ago, it had remained largely unchanged for an extended period. Consequently, many individuals are now pondering the significance of this launch tower at LC-39A, particularly as SpaceX intensifies its Starship activities in Texas. Recently, SpaceX resumed work on this launch system, albeit with a surprising twist. They embarked on a demolition project rather than constructing or upgrading anything. The legs of the OLM were systematically cut down, prompting various speculations. Among these hypotheses is the notion that SpaceX intends to rebuild the OLM with three legs instead of the current six at Starbase. Although a structure with three legs must endure greater forces, it could offer improved balance and stability. However, it turned out that this hypothesis was also incorrect. Subsequently, the remaining legs were removed, and by the end of March, the OLM appeared to have only one leg remaining. It seems likely that this final leg will be removed soon, as it no longer serves any purpose. This activity by SpaceX comes as a surprise, especially considering their initial determination when constructing this launch system several years ago. Construction of the launch tower commenced at the end of 2019. However, SpaceX opted to spend approximately a year redesigning both the Starship and ground system, resulting in the cessation of the construction work at the end of 2020. Work was later resumed at LC-39A in late 2021. Not only is the progress of building the launch tower in Florida affected by internal issues, but it is also slow due to the impact of NASA. The agency is often concerned that Starship's operations at LC-39A could disrupt the operations of Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon, which are crucial to NASA's plans, particularly the commercial crew program. Despite these challenges, SpaceX has made significant strides. Within 13 months, SpaceX completed most of the critical systems for this launch pad. Additionally, by the end of 2022, the Mechazilla arm was lifted and installed in the launch tower, similar to the system in Texas. The question arises, why did SpaceX demolish the OLM. In my opinion, there are several reasons for this. Firstly, it's possible that the OLM legs in Florida had encountered issues, prompting SpaceX to consider updating or replacing them with newer structures. This could be similar to the situation at the OLM in Texas, which appeared to be affected significantly after only a few flights. Such issues would be inconsistent with SpaceX's ambitious goal of frequent Starship launches. Alternatively, SpaceX may be considering building another system altogether, a launch pad combined with a flame trench diverter, a configuration utilized in many previous rockets. This approach offers certain advantages over the launch pad combined with the water deluge steel plate. If proven effective, this system could potentially be applied to launch towers in Texas in the future, including the existing one. Whether SpaceX will pursue this option or maintain the current launch pad, pad structure remains to be seen. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Another possibility to consider is relocating the systems currently at LC-39A, potentially including the launch tower to another location in Florida. One potential site for for relocation could be SLC-37, which is currently utilized by ULA for Delta IV Heavy launches. However, it's worth noting that the Delta IV Heavy is set to be retired after the NROL-70 mission. The most exciting prospect, and perhaps the most ambitious, is the potential relocation of the entire launch system to Starbase, Texas. This move could be undertaken to mitigate any potential impact on the activities of Falcon rockets. If realized, this relocation could lead to the establishment of a third launch tower at Starbase, further solidifying SpaceX's commitment to advancing Starship and Super Heavy with the Mechazilla arm in the near future. The latest update on the Crew Starliner mission reveals that Boeing and NASA have scheduled Starliner's crew flight test for no earlier than May 6th of 2024. Originally targeted for mid-April, the delay in scheduling is attributed to the busy activity at the International Space Station, or the ISS. Currently, there are seven vehicles docked at the ISS, including two Dragon capsules, a Cygnus resupply freighter, and four Soyuz capsules, two crew, two cargo. Given the crowded conditions at the ISS, it's understandable why NASA and Boeing have opted to push back the Starliner launch slightly. During the recent delay, Boeing utilized the time to complete several tasks, including the removal of of flammable insulating tape, software reviews, and the inspection of a new soft link in the parachute system. The soft link is a crucial component that connects the main line from the capsule to the risers up to the cat.
canopy. Fortunately, there are currently no pending issues that could potentially lead to further lengthy delays in the Starliner program. Regarding the flight schedule, the crew is set to perform a dry dress rehearsal akin to SpaceX's procedures with Crew Dragon. However, this test will take place inside United Launch Alliance's vertical integration facility, rather than at the launch pad. The day before the launch, the Atlas V rocket, with Starliner mounted on top, will be transported to the launch pad. In a previous launch attempt, the rocket remained at the launch pad for several days, enduring Florida thunderstorms, which caused moisture to accumulate in some of the service module's valves, resulting in a significant delay to the Starliner program. After liftoff, Starliner is expected to take one day to reach the International Space Station. Upon arrival, it will dock at the space station for a minimum of eight days before undocking and returning to Earth. The spacecraft will land using parachutes and airbags in the western United States region. This upcoming mission marks a pivotal moment for Boeing's Starliner program, which has faced numerous challenges and delays over the years. Following the Crewed Flight Test 1 mission, Boeing is slated to undertake at least five additional missions under the Commercial Crew Program contract awarded by NASA in 2014. These missions must be completed before the ISS ceases operations, which is anticipated to occur in 2030 or 2031. Comparatively, Boeing's progress has been slower than that of of its main competitor, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. As part of NASA's commercial crew program, Dragon has successfully completed nine crew missions, including demonstration missions and 30 cargo missions to the ISS. The performance discrepancy between the two spacecraft is evident. Moving forward, the aerospace community will keenly observe Boeing's Starliner missions to see how it performs and whether it can catch up with SpaceX's accomplishments. On March 30th, SpaceX achieved a remarkable feat by by launching two rockets from Florida within a span of just three hours and 38 minutes, showcasing their exceptional turnaround capabilities with the Falcon 9 rocket. The first launch occurred at 5.52 p.m. EDT from Launch Complex 39A, carrying the UTELSAT 36D telecommunications satellite to geostationary transfer orbit. Following this successful deployment, SpaceX swiftly prepared for the next launch. At 9.30 p.m. EDT, another Falcon 9 rocket took flight from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying 23 Starlink broadband satellites into orbit. This rapid succession of launches demonstrated SpaceX's efficiency and agility in managing multiple missions. While SpaceX aimed to achieve an even more ambitious goal of launching three missions within 24 hours, their plans were thwarted by adverse weather conditions leading to the cancellation of the third mission, another Starlink launch scheduled from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Nevertheless, SpaceX's ability to conduct two launches in such a short time frame reaffirms their position as a leader in the space industry, setting new milestones for rapid launch operations with the Falcon 9. During the two missions on the East Coast, both Falcon 9 first stages successfully returned to Earth as planned, landing on SpaceX's drone ships at sea approximately eight and a half minutes after liftoff. This marked the 12th liftoff and landing for UTEL Sat 36D Falcon 9 booster and the 18th for the Starlink booster. Following the launches, the UTEL Sat 36D satellite was deployed in to geostationary transfer orbit about 34 minutes after liftoff. Once operational, this satellite will provide TV broadcasting services to customers in Europe, Russia, and Africa. Meanwhile, the 23 Starlink satellites were successfully deployed into low Earth orbit, joining the constellation of more than 5,600 operational broadband satellites. Moreover, SpaceX achieved several notable milestones with the UTELSAT flight. It marked the 260th reflight of an orbital class rocket, coincidentally occurring on the 7th anniversary of SpaceX's first reflight attempt on March 30th of 2017 with the launch of the SES-10 satellite. This milestone laid the groundwork for extensive reuse possibilities in the future. Additionally, the UTELSAT mission was the 30th Falcon 9 launch of the year, aligning with SpaceX's goal of reaching 148 launches. Furthermore, SpaceX recorded its 300th landing attempt with an impressive track record of 289 successful landings and 215 consecutive successes highlighting the exceptional reliability of the Falcon 9. With these achievements, SpaceX is positioned to continue its active presence in the aerospace industry throughout the year, setting new records and pushing the boundaries of space exploration. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX. And until next time, keep looking up.